Hi there, welcome to this video. Premier repot. Premier referring to the fact that these two summer blooming phalaenopsis have never been repotted since they went into the self watering setup back in 2018. Now, I don't know what I'm up against, but I have to address these pots and I've got root tips growing. Not so much on my Phalaenopsis Tabasco Tex, but I can see it's trying. So maybe, you know, we're going to take advantage of the fact that it is trying and starting. It is extremely gnarly in the pot, very, very pot bound. And yeah, even the Lekka is starting to rise. I'm very, very concerned about this orchid. I do not know what I'm up against. In addition to that, I've got Leodoro Sweet Memory going bonkers with root tips. And I don't think that that one's going to be the more difficult of the two. I'd like to do them in the same video, but again, I'm not sure what I'm up against. So I'm going to be very cautious with how much I bite off today. But the root tips on any Phalaenopsis like Novelty Hybrid, <laughs> they are super delicate. And I have already broken off a root tip on the Sweet Memory back when I did the update and I put her back on the shelf. So I am going to start with the Tabasco Tex. I think this one's gonna be more complicated. <laughs> Famous last word. So we'll get sweet memory out of the way. And I already have all my kitten caboodle ready. And I have them soaked in CalMag and seaweed, 60 parts per million of calcium and magnesium and 40 parts per million of seaweed at a pH of 6.6, 6.7 around about there. It's been about 30 minutes, so that for me is a blitz soak. And if you remember a video in the past, I have four square pots that I bought and I couldn't remember what they were for <laughs> when it came the moment to repot my Phalaenopsis novelty hybrids. Yeah, yeah, it dawned on me. I remembered straight away that's what those four pots were for. I only have two at the moment that I do want to address and we'll have to wait and see maybe until next year. For the others. Now I have some flex in my pot, but uh, probably roots stuck all around the pot as well. So back into the mask it goes. This is not as easy a repot as, in my opinion, a cattleya would be or a dendrobium. This is a different kettle of fish because where do you grab the orchid? So I'm expecting damage. But what I am anticipating is once I get the orchid out, is to then just up pot her, depending on what I will find in the media. Of course, if it, there's a lot of death in there, then <laughs> we're gonna have to get a little bit more radical, but yeah, my intention is just to up pot, and that's why I'm thinking to get two of them done in this one single video. So I think I've been able to release the roots around the edge. Just double check here. And I apologize for the background noise. It is August. It is very, very noisy. It is the busiest month of the year on the Costa del Sol. So yeah, sorry about that if I can't edit it out. Once I get going with this, it's not like I can stop, pause, start again. And also there's quite a breeze today which might interfere with the mic. So I'm going to do this video COC and we'll see what happens. And the comments are there for a reason. If something was unclear or drowned out, then please, please address that in the comments. We're very happy to go into further detail. Now let's try and get her out. All right. The ideal way, of course, is to tip her upside down and have her just slide out together with me <laughs> and not snap any leaves. That's the ideal scenario. The reality is, after four years in a pot, <laughs> whoa, reality is she is just sliding out and falling into my hand. Oh, good girl. Yay. What a relief. What a relief. And we're okay. Oh, we are a-okay. There is some death, but it's not a disaster in here. Woohoo. Talk about getting away with extending the lifespan of a pot. <laughs> Woo! Relief, relief. I've got goosebumps. I'm so relieved. All right, slow down. Don't get ahead of yourself, Nina. We're not over the hill yet, and we have to do some pest treatment. Okay. Aha, the advantages of being able to see on the underside of the leaves. See that? See that? We only have minimal amount of death. 
That is transition death, I would say. That is not because of the fact that the orchid has been in there so long. These were existing roots and then they perished during the transition from sphagnum moss into leca. And then we have some pests that we can deal with right now. And we've got root tips up there and they won't be there for long, not because I intend to break them, but because I intend to put them back into the pot. Fantastic. Woo, this was better than expected. Gives me hope for the sweet memory. Fabulous. Now, in past videos, if you've watched them and have come to understand a pattern with regards to me and my self-watering repotting schedule, you've probably heard me say very, very often that I do not like to have my orchids in their pots without repotting, cleaning up the root ball for more than two years. I'll stretch it to three years. And here we have an orchid that's been in, well, orchids in plural, that's been in the pot for years. The reason being, if an orchid isn't struggling, I prefer just to leave it alone. We are transitioning and change of climate and acclimating and all that fun stuff that happens when an orchid comes new into a collection. I just like to leave them alone. Another thing is also that many times we hear when it comes to transitioning, best practice is to take the orchid out of the pot after maybe two, three months and do a cleanup of all the roots that have died during the transition process and put her back into the pot. Clearly, you can see I haven't done that. And unless the orchid was struggling, I would not have done that with any of the orchids that I have transitioned. I've always been quite hesitant about a successful transition, especially when it comes to Phalaenopsis, because in the past I used to get things wrong with the exception of novelty hybrids. And then I was just like, leave it be. If it's doing well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Another thing is also root size, root growth. How productive is the root growth? Should I go in because the orchid is so vigorous on the root front? Is it taking up space in the pot so quickly that the aeration is interrupted because there's no space based on the fact the roots have expanded so well, then it is time to go in and do something about it like I did in 2020 with my Cornus Servi variety Chatala Day. She is such a big, vigorous root grower. She's a joy. This root is firm, we'll leave it. She's a joy to grow and jumped into Lekka and self-watering without any hesitation whatsoever. And I had to repot her after two years. And she's been in her bigger pot now for two years. And that's where she's going to stay until she does what we just saw just now. The Lekka starting to, you know, rise, build up the orchid rising out of the pot and then not having enough airflow in the pot when it comes to flushing. And that is why in this instance, there was no root ball cleanup after three months. And even though I do say, yeah, that's a good idea to do that, I prefer to leave an orchid alone once it's in its pot and not showing any signs of stress. My orchid here is showing a lot of stress. It is all about mineral nutrient deficiency based on the circumstances of my winter, spring 21, 2022. Not good at all for summer blooming Phalaenopsis. And I have to be very careful when it comes to being able to fertilize during a time of year when they start to kick into growth or are completing a spike. So because my conditions were not ideal, I could not do what I normally do and start to help them out with fertilizer or supplementation. That is why you see deficiencies. Now I'm just trying to rinse out any of the stuck debris. You saw my hands getting a little bit dirty from what was in the pot itself as I touched the root ball, just rinsing that out. It's not here nor there, but while we have her, let's give it at least as good a go, as good as a cleanup as we possibly can. Another thing I want to point out is my blackening roots. You see my velamen isn't exactly ideal. You see that root tips here are dead and damaged. 
And that is because I cannot flush at a certain time of year, again, because of adverse conditions, cold root ball. LECA has an evaporative cooling effect around the root system as well. So in order just to tide an orchid over and get her through the hard times, I do the minimal, minimal amount of flushing that I can get away with being in LECA and self-watering. So while the roots are growing during that time of year, I have to be careful. Meaning that if I am super careful and vigilant about it, I could be missing the mark when it comes to flushing as a root tip grows. But I'm at least glad that I've got 99% of a root ball that is functioning in the pot. This makes me happy. And also here you can see how the growth is when you start, stop, start, stop. You can see the lines going down. That is when flushing isn't consistent while the root is growing. So the signs are there, all signs of stress, and not ideal conditions, not ideal care. But what I do is protect the orchid through adverse conditions to then hopefully keep her alive and hope for better times. Now, let's pot her up and see if we can do the same with a sweet memory without doing much damage at all. Because I'm nervous about those root tips and I'm being silly already thinking of her while I'm still dealing with my Tabasco Tex. Let's get that lecker sinking into all the nooks and crannies that we have in between this fabulous root system. The orchid is going bang smack in the middle and then some. The pot I had before was 15 centimeters. The pot I have now is a square one with 18 centimeters. We're talking about the root tips. I'm not putting any leca at the bottom of the pot. There is no need. I'm gonna let the leaves do the resting on the edge of the pot and that will be her height. I missed a dead root here. Let's take that away while we still can. All the way down to the green. There we go. One desiccated root gone. And now I can sterilize those snips again because I've just put garlic alcohol all over them in anticipation of sweet memory. Okay, this leaf is absorbing. We're going to leave it to do that on its own. I've got a root tip tucked in down there, which I hope to cover up very shortly. Got a root tip back here, which I hope to cover up very shortly. And a root tip heading down, which will be covered up very shortly. Fabulous. I also have a small, medium-sized leka. Before I had all mixed leka, that was before I separated my media out. Just going to be filling up very gradually and let the buoyancy of the water do its thing and actually add a little bit more water just to make sure that we're protecting the root tips that are on the surface there. I'm just going to add it in bit by bit so that the leka will fall into all the gaps. So the reason I'm using small medium-sized leka is because summer blooming phalaenopsis usually come in sphagnum moss when you get them new out of the nursery and that in itself is an indicator that the orchid likes a lot of water more so than the complex hybrids. Anything that comes in sphagnum moss and you're transitioning that into self-watering, semi-hydro, inorganic media, i.e. leka, then you want to be able to adapt how much water these orchids require with the size of your media. Now, as the pot has gotten bigger, my leka is getting smaller, just so that the wicking efficacy and the wetness, if that is a technical term, is balanced out by the larger size of the pot. In the previous pot, with 15 centimeters, as I didn't sort out leka size, I got away with large, small, medium, you know, straight out of the bag, cleaned and sterilized leka, making no real distinction between having to use smaller size leka to accommodate the watering requirements of these orchids. So with a larger pot, we're going to be specific. But do not misinterpret me saying I'm now using smaller leka to accommodate the watering requirements of this orchid with me then not needing to flush regularly. That doesn't change no matter the size of the leka. I am not able to skip that step just because I'm using small leka now. 
that has to be maintained given the circumstances, the grow environment, the temperatures and all of that, of course. So if I am up against the same challenges in the coming winter spring season, then of course I will be working on bringing the orchid through those adverse conditions. And from that moment on when everything is back A-OK, -okay, we can then continue with what we have to do and flushing does them a great deal of good. All right, she's tucked in. I didn't manage to get the root tips into the media because I was focusing on getting her somewhat back towards the back of the pot. So these are still poking out. But what I made sure was that any roots that were in the previous pot that were like exposed, because literally I tilted the orchid back a little bit because of the positioning, where they came up against the edge of the older pot, those are now at least covered with leka which is extremely important because the velamen needs the same circumstances restored that it has been accustomed to all these years. Otherwise they will dry out. The little bit that's sticking out here, I'm just gonna bank on the fact that underneath here, the leaves, once they are down, that they are going to be surrounded by plenty of humidity. And for that reason, they're not gonna fail on me. So leaves go down. I hope that you saw in the shot. If not, we'll turn her around. You can see how the base is still right above the media. That's all okay, but I really wanted her more in the center. If the orchid does survive in my conditions, then this will be the counterbalance for this side. I don't want everything already moving to the other side. Let's try the Leodora sweet memory. <laughs> Cool, huh? Just two little roots that were the remnants of the transition death, so to speak. This orchid, of course, as I mentioned prior, was not repotted after three months of transitioning her. So I did a little bit of a scale clean treatment here. There wasn't any scale, but seeing as the stomata of Phalaenopsis orchids are closed, during the day, we're gonna take advantage that we have good access and give some garlic alcohol to the underside. I would say that's pretty amazing right here. And she came out relatively easy. Now that I had the sound down because I had a car on idle in the background, it was all very annoying. But I hope that what I was doing was clear to see. Beautiful root growth. I'm very, very pleased with this result after four years. Very pleased. I like what I'm seeing. So what I'm trying to achieve here is 
get her a little bit upright. I don't want her to be growing bolt upright. That's not my intention here. But again, a little bit more to the center as far as the roots allow me to, seeing as they've taken on the shape of the previous pot, while still keeping the other roots that were in the pot submerged. That's the plan here. Holding down the orchid and a little bit of a jiggle. Let the water help me. You can see how much has settled. Now you're probably wondering if I'm gonna remove the moss. No, I'm not. It's gonna be a-okay as is. I would like this root to go down. We'll just help it along a little bit. All right, the status quo has been re-established. All the roots are the way they were before, with the exception of this one, which was somewhat aerial, but it was growing an extended root tip, so into the pot it goes. And everything is pretty much covered. That is used to being covered up all the way up and into the orchid there. Now, you're probably saying, well, you could fill around with more leca and the base would still be well above the media, but that is not my intention. My intention is to keep her in this pot as long as possible. I have more room and time to play with if I keep the leca low in case one day I may need to fill it up because roots are growing everywhere or she raises herself out of the pot of her own accord, and then I can fill up with leca as she does that. It gives me a lot more options just to leave her a bit lower in the pot and not fill up with leca. A tiny, tiny little additional bonus is there is more humidity if she's lower in the pot, but with my super dry climate, <laughs> With these Phalaenopsis, it doesn't make that much of a difference. They would love to have it much, much higher than even this here can provide. Needs must, and I can always protect everything that's going on with a microfiber, but these roots were growing nicely before at the time when they were much higher, so they are going to be absolutely fine. There they are, the first of four. Well, I'm glad that we got this one out of the way. It's been plaguing me for quite a few weeks, seeing as I saw new root tips grow. The Tabasco Tex, I'm not too pleased I couldn't get all those root tips into the pot. Oh well. Let's see with all that humidity under there whether they get the hint and do it themselves. But yeah, if this was helpful, would you please give it a thumbs up? It would really, really help my channel. And the YouTubes would find this video sooner the more thumbs up or thumbs down that I get. I would appreciate your support on that regard very, very much. And if you think somebody is struggling with their summer bloomers, transitioning, wanting to transition, should they, shouldn't they, all that fun stuff, send them my way or send this video their way. This way it might help them as well to make a calculated decision. For sticking around to the end of the video thank you so very much because that also supports my channel a lot so thank you i appreciate it let me know if you have any questions if you have anything specific you want to run by me that's why we've got comments let's continue the dialogue down there in the meantime though i am going to wish you a fabulous day on one condition as per usual that you please stay safe take care bye